so in this lecture and the following couple of lectures we introduce uh, several other uh, basic signals specifically the unit impulse and then unit step functions okay in continuous and uh, discrete time domain specifically in this lecture uh, let me concentrate on continuous time domain okay continuous time signals okay there are also of considerable importance in uh, signals and systems okay these are very much uh, useful okay so later on uh, we will see that uh, how we can use unit impulse signals as uh, basic building blocks for the construction and uh, representation of other signals okay so we begin with the continuous time case before that let me recap okay what we discussed in the last couple of lectures okay so we were looking at uh, some of the standard signals uh, which uh, we came across in the study of uh, you know networks and systems and their waveforms if you recall among the standard uh, signals we discussed uh, dc signal then sinusoidal signal then exponential signals again in exponential we have two types complex and um, real exponential signals so the general form of exponential signal is a bar times e to the st where s is complex number s is a complex quantity i mean it's a number so s is equal to sigma plus j omega in general and this s plays an important role okay so we termed this quantity as complex frequency as i said okay um simply for the reasons that it has the dimension of 1 over time that is something per second and uh, something per second is called a frequency and in general s yes, is called a complex frequency okay so we should not read more meaning into that there is no physical meaning for complex frequency it's a merely mathematical representation okay we should not interpret uh, yes as a as an indicating a repetitive phenomenon like a periodic phenomenon we also mentioned that any signal like uh, uh, a bar times e to the st in general will uh, yield a complex value for a real for a real values of time okay so so in order to have a real function of time each complex exponential signal is always accompanied what by a conjugate that conjugate is a bar conjugate then e to the st conjugate and if you combine these two guys it yields a real signal and that real signal we derived as 2 times a times e to the sigma t of times cos of omega t plus phi that's it where a is the magnitude of uh, this complex vector complex coefficient and phi is the angle associated with uh, its complex number a bar now there are some special cases of this complex number okay complex function okay so um, that special special case is e to the j omega t as i said in this sigma equal to 0 and uh, this a bar we assumed as 1 and phi also equal to 0 in this case magnitude of a is equal to 1 and phi equal to 1 so this is a very very important signal this one is important signal because this e to the j omega t is associate closely related to 
cos of omega t because e to the j omega t plus e to the j minus j omega t becomes cos omega t and this e power j omega t uh, is also an exponential, exponent, exponential signal but the value of the complex frequency is what is the complex exponential frequency purely imaginary no real part ok s is equal to sigma plus j omega where sigma equal to 0 therefore e power s t becomes e power j omega t because sigma is 0 ok if you have cos omega t then cos omega t is always b equal to e to the j omega t its counterpart that is complex conjugate e to the minus j omega t by 2 similarly if you have sin omega t then this is equal to e to the j omega t plus e to the minus j omega t by 2j so sinusoidal functions of time so, let us say cos omega t and uh, sin omega t can always be expressed in terms of e to the j omega t so therefore e to the j omega t is the special case of an exponential signal with the complex frequency s yes. so in this case it happens to be purely imaginary j omega so in fact e to the j omega t can be thought of as almost uh, synonymous with a sinusoidal quantity because after all real part of e to the j omega t will yield uh, cos omega t then imaginary part of e to the j omega t is equal to sin omega t the imaginary ok sorry so it is always convenient for us whenever we have to deal with the, the excitation functions excitation means input whenever we have we want to deal with the input functions of the type cos omega t or sin omega t you replace them you replace those inputs by e to the j omega t do the calculation and finally take the real part of the solution to get the resultant ok that would um, get if indeed excitation had been cos omega t so more about this we will learn a little later that manipulation of it as i said ma manipulation of e to the j omega t is easier than the manipulation of uh, you know trigonometric functions because you have only one function to deal with the, that is the first point first advantage easy to manipulate ok exponential functions are easy to manipulate and the second part is the differentiation and the integration of uh, of e to the j omega t is convenient than differentiation and the integration of trigonometric functions because you alternately switch to cosine and cosine to sine and sine to cosine and positive sine to negative sine negative sine to positive sine and so on and so forth therefore it is much more convenient to handle um, e to the j omega t e to the j omega t now the characteristics of all these functions are uh, that their derivatives exist up to an infinite order ok you can take derivatives infinite times infinite times for example if you say um, y of t is equal to phi t square then y dash of t is equal to 10 t then y double dash of t is equal to 10 and y triple dash of t is equal to 0 ok so the derivative exists up to second order but the beauty of the exponential e to the g omega naught t or sin omega naught t or cos omega naught t you can differentiate infinite number of times 
okay so that is a very very important characteristics of uh, this exponential functions and sinusoidal functions so sinusoidal signals and exponential signals you can go on taking the derivatives they are all smooth functions if you don't have smooth functions then you cannot take derivatives up to infinite order okay so let me take a couple of examples quickly then i'll move on to to the main picture of this lecture okay so let us find out what are the complex frequencies present uh, in those examples so i will write down a series of signals which are not the elementary kind that we have been talking about in the past couple of lectures but they are composed of signals of the type e to the st okay complex frequency signals let's say cos of 2t plus 30 degree okay now this is a pure uh, sinusoidal signals but as i said uh, cos 2t can always can always be expressed um, as e to the uh, power j 2t and so on therefore 2t plus 30 plus e to the minus j 2t plus 30 whole divided by 2 therefore what are the complex frequencies in this here plus j 2 and here minus j 2 so these two are complex frequencies those frequencies are sitting over here this is plus j 2 and this is minus j 2 this is sigma and this is j omega axis so x axis representing sigma and y axis representing omega so in the complex frequency plane with uh, this x axis representing sigma and the y axis representing omega so you have the plus 2 plus j2 here and uh, minus j2 here suppose i have another signal let's say 2 times cos 3t plus 4 times sin 3t then again you have a sinusoidal naturally you can combine these two into like uh, by using trigonometric identities you can write a times cos of 3t some phase angle phi okay but even if uh, if it is as they are you can have complex frequencies which is present uh, here plus or minus j3 um this has e to the j3t plus e to the minus j3t and this guy has by 2 and here e to j 3t plus e to the minus j 3t by 2j so the complex frequency of this guy is plus j 3 and this one represents again minus j 3 and this has a complex frequency of plus j 3 and this has the complex frequency of minus j 3 therefore the complex frequencies present in 2 cos 3t plus 4 sin 3t is plus or minus j times 3 and these complex frequencies are represented in the complex or located in the complex plane as this is plus j3 and this one is minus j3 let me take the third example suppose i have e to the minus 2t plus e to the minus 3t and cos of 4t plus theta okay here as far as the first part is concerned there is no imaginary part only i have minus 2 so this is my complex frequency and in this case if you resolve then minus 3 plus or minus j times 4 so there are three frequency components which are present in this so minus 2 comma minus 3 plus j times 4 minus 3 times minus j 4 sorry minus 3 minus 4 j so if you pl- if you plot or if you put in the complex plane this is sigma this is omega j omega axis then minus 2 is somewhere here and minus 3 plus 4j here and this is minus 3 minus j 4 and this is minus g minus 3 plus j 4 so lastly suppose uh, i have uh, 4 times plus 5 into e to the power of minus 2t cos of 5t plus theta so in this case what is the frequency here zero okay this four come 
okay this is a dc term constant term right so if it is constant then you can say dc term okay so it can be thought of as a special case of uh, you know a complex exponential where both uh, sigma equal to 0 sigma is equal to 0 and omega is equal to 0 now let us take the second term again minus 2 plus or minus j times um, let me take uh, okay plus or minus j time 5 and if you look at the points on the complex plane let me say this is not minus and let's say this is 5 so this is 2 plus or minus 5 so it, it comes like this this is 2 and this is 5 and this is minus 5 2 plus j times 5 2 minus j times 5 what it means is that these two frequencies okay together will give rise to a term which is e to the 2t cos of phi t plus theta therefore uh, it is a growing exponential like this we will already seen that this type of variations growing exponential and that um, growing exponential you cannot have it indefinitely because after all your uh, electronic circuits or any devices will not increase the voltage indefinitely as time goes it reaches it shoots up to very very high values therefore um, those are signals which will uh, which will not likely to come across as far as physical situation is concerned so this is un uh, we don't want this type of signals why suppose let's say t equal to 0 it produces let's say 1 volt at t equal to 2 then it produces 2 times see exponentially it is multiplying e power 2t e power 2t means 2t e power 2 into 2 4 e power 4 e power 4 you know the value so it is very high value it keep on goes so such a e power 4 volts you cannot in you, maybe you can generate after that if you put 3 then e power 6 if you put 4 e power for 3 this 6 for e power 8 e power 8 8 times cos of this function e power 8 is a huge number you cannot such a very huge value okay so such a high voltage you cannot generate e power 8 volts how do you generate no you cannot generate it okay so physically we don't want this kind of situations okay we will not likely to come across as far as a physical situation or a physical device is concerned because they come across for a limited period of time okay maybe some limited period of time if the signal grows no problem but unlimited time if it starts to grow either your device will burn or it will go to the saturation mode so later on you will study in some uh, some other courses like electronic circuits that when the device enters into saturation mode then you cannot use it for amplification purpose it uh, introduces some kind of distortion called non-linear distortion and this is very very bad for your communication non-linear distortion is okay therefore the growing exponential cannot go on indefinitely because they reach infinite proportions with respect to time so as long as you have a sustained oscillations like this okay um, sustained signal or sustained oscillations which can last for a long time or forever then you you need to have a negative real part so the real part should uh, lie in the left half of the left left hand side of the s plane if the if the negative if the real part happens to be the right hand side then it starts to grow okay so this we will study in more detail when we discuss laplace transform z transform and fourier transform and all not fourier transform laplace transform and z transforms okay so we have seen you know different waveforms on the complex exponentials for different values of sigma and omega that we have plotted in the last couple of lectures also okay now let us enter into the main business of uh, this lecture now all these signals as i mentioned which are uh, smooth so that you can take uh, you know derivation derivative or 
uh, integrate infinite number of times and second they are continuous continuous and also uh, they have uh, continuous derivatives even if you take a derivative once then again you will get uh, that derivative is continuous these kind of things you may not always get it you know for some other signals other than your complex exponential e to the j omega naught t cos omega naught t and sin omega t these are the only three signals even tan you don't get it now the life is not always smooth and uh, you know the way you wanted sometimes there are some hardships so we need to be ready to handle that therefore there is a need to have a compact notation for signals which are uh, either uh, discontinuous or they have discontinuous derivatives so then what will you do in that case for example let me take an example some of the examples i have taken from the you know nptel video lectures so let me say this is t and this one is uh, x1 of t let's say this point is t1 and uh, this is t2 this is zero let me take one more signal constant then there is a discontinuity here jump and constant again it comes down like this and this point is t2 and this point is t1 and this one is t and this point is t3 let me call this signal x2 of t so i consider two functions namely x1 of t and uh, x2 of t it is difficult to describe the signal analytically mathematically i cannot uh, you know write the signal suppose you have a smooth functions then i can say write sin omega not t like this i cannot write down here okay so therefore it is difficult uh, to describe this mathematically how will you write this fun this this type of uh, signals therefore we have to say that uh, this function x1 of t is uh, zero for negative values of time t less than zero okay and uh, this has uh, you know it has a slope uh, negative slope from 0 to t1 this value this value 0 to t1 okay it has got an analytical expression of this let's say x okay and um, from this point to this point you give another analytical expression from this point to this point you give one analytical expressions and from t1 to t2 this point you give another uh, analytical expression similarly for the second case also if you want to describe this function this x2 of t then it is zero for negative values of time it is constant uh, in this region from 0 to t1 right t1 is here another constant from t1 to t2 and it has gotten it has got a certain straight line like this from t2 to t3 and beyond that it is zero so that means you have to describe or give separate expressions okay you give one expression here let's say e1 and here put another expression e2 you put another mathematical expression e3 you put another mathematical expression e4 okay so you need to give separate expressions for you know there are one two three four again here one more extra five regions e5 so five expressions you have to give for a different uh, five different regions as far as this uh, function x2 of t is concerned so it becomes a little cumbersome it's not easy to track therefore uh, one would like to see if we can express this uh, by means of some notational expressions 
instead of different expressions let us try to find out some common notational expressions like what we did for uh, smooth functions like e to the j omega naught t it can represent both cos omega naught t and sin omega naught t similarly we will try to try to find out is there any other uh, you know means to notate to denote this okay so then we do not to say that this is valid for this interval of time this interval of time and this is valid this interval of time and this is valid that interval of time like that no need to say okay and this leads us to the topic of what is called singularity functions so this is a motivation behind this uh, singularity functions so the singularity functions are impulse functions that's what we started with in this lecture and then unit step functions when i say singularity function what i mean is singularity functions are discontinuous functions i that means either the function itself discontinuous or the derivative of the function has discontinuity okay therefore a singularity is a point at which a function does not possess a derivative so you take a function there are certain some points at which the function does not hold the derivative okay so for the example if i took these two examples this and uh, that they have uh, you know discontinuous or their uh, derivative has uh, discontinuous okay so it is a singularity function that we will take up for our discussion now one of the most important uh, singularity function is the unit step function okay and this function was originally introduced uh, into the literature by oliver heaviside he was a british engineer okay who made a uh, signal contributions to communication theory and uh, operational methods of analysis of networks and uh, systems in fact um, he was a controversial figure and most of his work was uh, not founded uh, on rigorous mathematics so he got into trouble with mathematicians of his day but he introduced uh, step functions and uh, operational calculus or methods okay mm, to give a short note about him he is a very controversial figure right so so whenever somebody criticize his work he immediately retort to the mathematicians okay who were not happy with his work he would say do i stop eating because i do not exactly understand the process of digestion digestion so that was uh, his uh, retort to those people who criticized uh, his work because he introduced uh, some methods and they are working very fine and they are very comfortable and it is wonderful for uh, wonderful from the point of view of communication but mathematicians objected from his day so he said why should uh, you poke further into this as long as it produces the result so as long as it produces a result we should be happy about them okay don't bring something you know deeper into that that's what uh, his uh, retort was his thought was so that's that is uh, just uh, that is just a brief historical note on oliver heaviside okay who contributed and introduced uh, the unit step function so we will now take up uh, three important singularity functions these are called uh, singularity function because as i said either they have discontinuous by the function itself or once you take the derivative then that derivative derivatives may have discontinuous and therefore in the regular classical sense of mathematics they don't have derivatives so in the regular mathematical point of view you cannot take derivative okay if derivative fails 
to be continuous in classical mathematics you say it does not have the derivative that means it is uh, singular in that point that is why these are called uh, singularity functions the most important perhaps is a um, unit step function so instead of starting with impulse function let me start with a uh, unit step function okay so as i said uh, it was introduced by oliver heaviside okay and this unit step function is denoted by taking the first letter of unit step u of t okay this function is defined as u of t is equal to 1 if t is greater than 0 and 0 uh, if t is less than 0 that's it okay so if you draw this function then it is 1 for t greater than 0 and this is a time axis and 0 for t less than 0 this is a region where t is greater than 0 and this is a region where t is less than 0 okay so it is 0 up to this point up to this point on the time axis then from this point onwards it has a value of 1 it keep on goes so as a function of time it has got a waveform like this okay zero for negative values of time negative values of t and uh, one for positive values of time that is positive value of t at t equal to zero itself we don't really care okay so you cannot say whether it is zero or one because at zero it is zero and uh, also you can say one there is a sudden jump sudden jump at t equal to 0 t is equal to 0 so we don't really care what it is at t equal to t is equal to 0 it can be left undefined when t equal to 0 it is undefined and sometimes no people will say why why are you saying it is undefined please take the average okay but uh, you can take one if you wish or zero if you like or 1 by 2 whatever it is so sometimes people will say no no it is 1 when t equal to 0 then somebody will say no no zero it is when t equals 0 some no no don't take 1 and 0 take average 1 half when t equals 0 mostly predominantly people agree to this but these two many people will object so but these two are this is a proper definition when one term it is clearly defined no ambiguity when 1 t greater than 0 and 0 when t less than 0 okay normally we are not really concerned uh, in most of the work it doesn't matter how you take it so we will leave it undefined but if really it becomes necessary you take it uh, as 1 half 1 by 2 this value because it is the average of the right and left left extreme points it comes suddenly jumps like this right so this is a left extreme point 0 and the right extreme points 1 right so i take the average of this right and left extreme points it becomes 1 half and in some limiting process it will converge to 1 half so you may take it as a 1 by 2 in any case the important thing here is that uh, it is a discontinuous function of time t so there is a discontinuity here and there is a discontinuity here these two points its left hand limit is zero it is zero here okay and then suddenly it jumps suddenly it jumps by a value of 1 unit and it stays constant forever from that point on from this point onwards it 
from this point from this point onwards it stays one okay so it resembles as a step it resembles as a step that is why he named it as a step function there is a step rise that is why it is called no, a step function since the height of the step is one see the height is one unit so one is also you can call unit unity so therefore this is unit step function it is a reason name okay so since the height of the step is one it is called a unit step function now using this unit step function we can describe a, a number of other uh, functions of time which have uh, discontinuities so let's take a series of example to illustrate uh, how the unit step function can be used uh, to describe uh, different types of uh, functions suppose i have a function like this mm. this height is four unit let me draw it properly okay the signal height is 4 units so how do you describe this it is zero it is zero up to this point and from here to here it is 4 units let's say 4 volts and here it is zero volt how do you describe previously i had only one unit actually jump now here i have 4 units therefore it is 4 times of u of t the height is 4 okay so this function has got four units for positive t and zero for negative values of time then obviously this will be described as four times u of t because it is a same unit function enlarged by four times okay Suppose I have a function like this, the function is 0, 0, 0, 0 and after some time it comes like this. Now the same unit step function but it is delayed by let us say this time unit is 3. Okay, So this is your u of t, 1 unit, this also height is 1 unit but it is delayed by 3 units. So, if it is delayed by 3 units, then, then we know how to represent. If x of t is delayed by 3 units, then you write x of t minus 3. Therefore, this guy, this is u of t and this one is u of t minus 3. Okay. So, you would call that u of t minus 3 because as long as your argument is positive, then its value is 1. See? u of t is 1 as long as t is positive greater than 1 and it is 0 as long as t is negative. Now in this if we substitute t equal to let us say u of uh, t minus 3 then substitute t equal to 3 then you will get u of 0 anyway that is positive then you will get plus 1 when t is equal to 0 you will get plus 1 so it is here no problem when t is equal to 2 then u of 2 minus 3 minus 1 what is u of minus 1 from the definition here when t is negative then it is 0 therefore u of minus 1 is equal to 0 similarly when t equal to 1 then u of um, 1 minus 3 that is u of minus 2 again the argument is negative if the argument is negative the unit step unit step function will have the value of 0 similarly when t equals 0 then u of 0 minus 3 again u of minus 3 and the argument is negative if the argument is negative then again you can conclude that this is 0 it has 0 value now let's take the other cases okay so here the function is 0 here the function is 0 
here the function is 0 here the function is 0 and so on this all the lines in this line the in this line the function is 0 now the moment you put t equal to 4 then what happens u of 4 minus 3 then it is u of 1 the argument is positive if the argument is positive from the definition if t is greater than 0 then it is 1 therefore this is equal to 1 now substitute t is equal to 5 then u of 5 minus 3 u of 2 again the argument is positive therefore it is plus 1 plus 1 okay so this function is nothing but the delayed version of unit step function by 3 units of time now suppose i take a function like this what is this u of t is like this now i am having the value 1 for negative values of 1 and it suddenly comes down uh, jumps to down from 1 to it comes to 0 suddenly and it retains 0 okay it comes it stays 1 here and it comes suddenly jumps suddenly jumps here okay and it goes keep on goes like this now how will you describe this function it is a time reversal operation of your x of t suppose your x of t is like this then x of minus t will be like this okay it, it goes like that okay so therefore this function is nothing but u of minus t time reversal of your unit step function now let me take one more example my function is like this the unit step values the step value is 1 and now i wanted to know what it is this is t so my signal starts at infinity and comes 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 and with one value and it reaches this point and let's say this value is 4 when when t becomes 4 then it drops down drops down to 0 and again it it, it uh, remains at a 0 value then how will you describe this one is nothing but as a value 1 as long as t is less than 4 t is less than 4 then it is 1 uh, it has the value of 1 ok therefore this function is defined by u of 4 minus t see one way you can construct using your uh, um, transformation of your independent uh, variables like um, first you have to shift the signal then uh, fold the signal scale the signal like that you can do or you simply you can use a definition like uh, u of t is equal to 1 when t is greater than 0 and 0 when t is less than 0 always remember this definition and attack the problem okay now let me write u of 4 minus t now you can verify substitute by different values you will come to know let us say t equal to 4 then u of 4 sorry u of 0 anyway u of 0 is undefined leave it ok do not bother about that when t is equal to 5 then u of 5 no 4 minus 5 then u of minus 1 if the argument is negative then this value is 0 ok when t equal to t is equal to 6 then u of 4 minus 6 minus 2 again the argument is negative therefore it is 0 so when t equal to 5 6 also it is 0 here you can see it is 0 fine now let me substitute t is equal to 3 then in this case u of um, 4 minus 3 which is u of 1 what what is u of 1 it is positive that argument is positive therefore u of 1 is 1 if substitute t is equal to 2 then u of um, 4 minus 2 that is u of 2 again it is positive value therefore this is equal to 1 look at here at 3 it has a value of 1 at 2 it has a value of 1 at 1 
it has a value of 1 not a 0 it has a value of 1 if you have still doubt then you can substitute when t equal to minus 1 then what will happen u of 4 minus t right 4 minus minus of 1 so minus of minus plus 4 plus 1 5 u of 5 now the argument is positive therefore this is 1 that is it so when t is equal to minus 1 then again you have the value of 1 therefore this function is described by u of 4 minus t that is it ok let me take one more example so as I said uh, suppose I have a function like this the function comes like this and suddenly it jumps down to minus 1 the same unit step but instead of climbing up it is climbing down so in this case how will you represent the same u of t but it is inverted so you put minus t here now you can substitute different values when t equal to t is equal to 1 then minus of u of 1 the argument is positive therefore it is 1 so minus 1 times 1 so it is minus 1 so that is what you get minus 1 when t is equal to 1 when t is equal to 2 then what value you will get you will get plus you will get again minus 1 how do you prove that minus u of 2 again look at the argument argument is positive therefore if it is positive then u of 2 is 1 so minus 1 which is minus 1 so, and so on therefore this function represents u of minus t now let me take another function if it is like this then what happens the same signal delayed by let us say 1 unit 1 so therefore minus u of t minus 1 suppose instead of that let me draw a figure like this then let us say this is 2 then what happens the same this function this function delayed advanced now it is because it comes in the left hand side so it is advanced by advanced by 2 units right therefore this is u of t plus 3 since it is in the negative side minus 1 so I put minus here that is all ok so let me write down some list of units of functions so if you have jump like this then u of t then if you have the jump like this it goes then it is u of min sorry u of t and put a minus then if the signal is delayed from here then u of t minus t naught this t naught value and if the same function is advanced by like this then this is let us say this value is minus t naught u of t plus t naught and uh, this one if you delay by t naught seconds then this is u of minus let me minus u of t minus t naught then if you advance the signal like this then this is minus u of t plus t naught where t naught is this one minus t naught ok now the next uh, set of signals are let us say I have the signal like this what is this this is u of minus t time reversed version of u of t now for this I can have uh, like this also ok now this is minus u of minus t the step is comes like this and this one is comes and comes like this maybe I will uh, put a highlighter here sorry it goes and this one is like this maybe I will put the here also u of t comes 0 0 0 jumps here and again it stays 1 and forever u of t minus t is a delayed version it is 0 up to t naught and then jumps at this point and it stays 1 forever and this one is the advanced version of t by t naught second duration so this is minus t naught 
and here it stays 0 at t equal to 0 it jumps down and stays at minus 1 so that is minus u of t minus u of t okay and this one is comes 0 up to t and it jump goes down and again it stays minus 1 therefore this is minus u of t minus t naught okay and this advanced version it is 0 up to this point and it comes down and it stays at this point so this is minus u of t plus t naught advanced version and this one is delayed version delayed this one is advanced the same set of signals you can derive here also this is u of t and this is a minus u of minus t then you can draw one more signal like this okay so this is delayed version therefore u of minus t let's say t naught so what is this plus t naught you can substitute for example if you take 2 then you can 1 or 2 you can substitute if you are still in doubt you put a signal like this this I, I think we already done it u of t I am sorry u of minus t plus 1 let us say this is 1 when t equal to 1 or let us say t, equal, t is equal to 2 then minus 2 plus 1 minus 1 so it is 0 when t is equal to 0 then uh, the argument is positive then it is one value so therefore like this if the signal goes like this u of minus t plus t naught then uh, you have the signal like this delayed sorry advanced version of signal like this so that means it is 1 comes down and goes like this therefore this one you can write as u of minus t minus t naught let us say this point is t naught and this one I can consider two signals one you can advance mm, sorry delay let us say t naught then how do you describe this minus u of minus t plus t naught or you can say advanced version of this like this then minus u minus t minus all or minus here minus t naught again the signal comes 1 1 1 at t equal to t naught then it jumps to 1 and stays forever so like this you can describe and this is a delayed version at t equal to t naught then it goes like this this is t and uh, this is t okay so that's it about a uh, unit step function now let me take one application of this unit step function okay so the unit step function is also useful in describing functions like this like take a square pulse or rectangular pulse like that let me take a square pulse 2 3 and this is one unit of 1 volt height is 1 volt so this is a kind of you know pulse sometimes you know called gate functions it looks like a gate so this is called a gate function and this function we will repeatedly use in our uh, signals and systems and in communication engineering so please remember this function okay because it is like a gate function in this interval from 2 to 3 the signal is there afterwards the signal is not there at all therefore this is also sometimes called gate function now such functions can be can easily be shown to be the sum of two functions okay so let me take one function like this at uh, 2 there is a jump of 1 units let me call this is x1 of t let me take another signal it, it stays 0 and exactly at 3 it jumps now like this okay now let me call this is x2 of t now subtract x2 of t from x1 of t 
point by point to subtract you start from here what is the value 0 what is the value here in the corresponding point 0 0 minus 0 0 and what is the value here 0 what is the value here 0 so again 0 like this point by point every point you do it like this 0 and again this is 0 and uh, at 0 point also again here also 0 so 0 and this point 0 this point 0 0 but at this point at 2 it it, it it jumps to a value of 1 but here at 2 at 2 this is again 0 so the value is 1 here 1 minus 0 1 therefore at exactly 2 it is 1 now you keep on do the same kind of operation so here the value is 1 and the corresponding point here the value is 0 here the value is 1 and the corresponding point here 0 you you know subtract again 1 minus 0 1 1 it retains at 1 it stays at 1 the moment you reach at t t equals 3 and this value also 1 and this value also 1 so 1 minus 1 0 so it comes down to 0 and afterwards here also 1 here also 1 here also 1 and here also 1 so 1 minus 1 0 therefore this remaining all points are 0 therefore a gate pulse or a pulse of this kind is obtained by subtracting x2 of t from x1 of t now our job is how do we represent this guy mathematically again this looks like a step function but a delayed version of step function right delayed by two units of step function therefore this is u of t minus 2 what about this guy this guy is delayed by three units therefore u of t minus 3 so you are subtracting u of t minus 3 from u of t minus 2 therefore u of t minus 2 minus u of t minus 3 therefore this gate pulse is mathematically written as u of t minus 2 minus u of t minus 3 ok so that means uh, in this this area is subtracted by this area so these two areas will get cancelled from this point onwards ok up to infinity and this area also subtracted from the this area so therefore you are getting zero this area you don't get anything here that's it i am sorry that is why from this point onwards you are maintaining zero no area so a gate function or a pulse function like this can be written as u of t minus 2 minus u of t minus 3 okay so why do you put u of t minus 3 you want to pull down that step to 0 at uh, t equals 3 so therefore at uh, t equals 3 you have to introduce a negative step of unit magnitude so that's what we have done here negative step so that the original step was going like this and you pull down to 0 ok so let me take one more example so this is very very important mm, let me take a pulse like this a symmetric pulse let us say minus 3 2 plus 3 ok so which is symmetrically situated around uh, the origin this is 0 anyway this is not symmetric let me draw it properly maybe it is symmetric now yes let us say this point is 0 ok now let me call this is x of t ok then you can think of uh, this as a step function starting at this point and subtracting that a negative step function starting at this point therefore take two step functions one step function is like this take another step function it uh, 
rises at 3 this is 3 and this is minus 3 let us say this is x1 of t and this one is x2 of t how do you describe mathematically it is advanced version of your unit step function and let us say the height is 4 volts so again I will maintain 4 volts here also and here also I will put 4 volt the height is 4 volts this height therefore height times 4 times u of advanced version therefore u of t plus 3 units and this one is delayed version 4 times u of t minus 3 subtract these two guys you will get a square pulse like this symmetrical pulse situated at uh, about 0 around the origin therefore 4 times u of t plus 3 minus 4 times u of t minus 3 okay so your u of t plus 3 is going like this but then you don't want uh, you know this step to be uh, continue forever okay you don't want to continue this step forever you don't want like this okay at this point when t equals 3 you want to introduce a negative step function that is why you introduce this guy of step of 4 uh, units so that this portion is cancelled i mean uh, this portion is cancelled by this portion so for this you subtract therefore minus of u of t minus 3 okay therefore this is indeed the given pulse this pulse okay mm. let me take one more example so at 1 there is a jump of 1 unit and at uh, 2 there is a jump of another 1 unit and then it comes down to 3 at uh, n equals 3 so this is t and this one is let's say x of t then how will you write this function this function is 0 up to 1 then there is a jump here and uh, it stays at 1 between 1 and 2 and again there is a jump at this point at uh, t equals 3 then it stays at 1 uh, no stays at 2 then it comes down to 0 and stays at 0 after uh, 3 t equals 3 ok so in this case uh, how do you use your um, unit step function and describe so to describe this always uh, what you what you should do is you, you should start with the first step so this is my first step in the func function so start with the first step and see what are the other steps that you have to be added to that in order to describe the actual situation so the first step is at n equals 3 so you put the function like this and then at t equal t equals 2 you introduce one more step so you take you need another step at t equals 3 you put another step if you combine these two guys then you will get a function like this it is 1 up to 2 then it jumps by 2 units and stays like this forever this is x1 of t and or else I will draw the figure here so that it will be easy for you to understand mm. Up to this point, here is 0, here 0, here 0, here 0, 0, 0, all are 0 to the left of t equals 1. 
therefore it is a stays zero here and it jumps by one unit and uh, when it reaches this point here also one and here also one so one plus one two therefore at uh, t equals two it jumps to two two volts and here one volts so this is your x one of t plus x two of t therefore this is your x one of t plus x two of t okay so this stays 2 volt up to what t equals 3 afterwards i have to pull it down to 0 therefore what i will do now is i will uh, maintain 0 up to 3 the moment i reach 3 then i'll introduce a negative unit step function by how many units by minus 2 volt units so therefore this and that will get cancelled see he here this is plus 2 volt and this one is minus 2 volt and this this one is plus 2 unit and this is minus 2 unit if we add this one let me call this is x3 of t and this is called x4 of t you add these two guys then 1 increase by 1 oh, i am sorry this is not as per the scale Mm. 2 so 1 2 to 1 jump then another jump stays there and comes like this ok so therefore this is going to be u of t plus 1 t plus 1 or t minus 1 t minus 1 because it is delayed right so t minus 1 plus u of t plus 2 2 minus 2 times the unit amplitude is 2 times u of t minus 3 that's it okay <clears throat> so that's it So, so these examples illustrate uh, the usefulness of the step function in describing discontinuous functions and piecewise constant functions because in this interval it is constant, in this interval it is constant, in this interval constant such a type of functions are called piecewise constant functions. Okay, and you must develop the facility to describe such functions by means of appropriate uh, unit step function with uh, you know by means of uh, step function with appropriate weights okay and appropriate shift in the time domain whether you delay it or advance it or time reversal or um, you know multiply by minus one all those things you can do. Okay, so we have in indicated by means of these examples. Okay, so and you must develop the facility of describing such functions um, by means of appropriate steps with appropriate weights and appropriate shifts in time as we have indicated uh, you know, in these examples. So let me stop at this point. In the next lecture we will start with the unit ramp functions. Thank you very much.